Welcome to Edmonton at the beautiful Savile Community Sports Center for the first game of the 2014 Canada Basketball Under-17 Boys National Championships between Prince Edward Island in white and the Alberta uh, Provincial Team in orange. My name is Paul Sir, and I'm joined today by two former gold medalists in National Championship play, high school teammates Steve Sir and Jermaine Buckner. Steve, can you tell us about the two teams that we're going to be watching today in this first game? Yes, we're going to have an interesting matchup between the 8th ranked team and the 10th ranked team heading into this tournament. Uh, PEI comes in this, this year ranked 8th, uh, having two feature players, uh, one being Braden White, number 21. We're going to start with Alberta. We're going to start with Ahir Ugulak. He is a big time big time player for big time player for Alberta. Uh, tenth grade player from Edmonton won the provincial championship with Harry Ainley. And his teammate coming into the tournament too is Awak Peel, also a Harry Ainley player. Uh, won the provincial championship with the here and teammates Marvin Washington and Mitch Bartell. These two guys are really athletic, really tough, and they're gonna provide a lot of spark for Alberta. For the, for the PEI side, we have number 21, Braden Wright. White, he is a leader for the team. He's uh, one of the guys that the coaches count on quite a bit to provide stability for their group. And he's going to be teaming up with uh, his, uh, teaming up with number six, Jack McCauley. This is their floor general. He's a guy that will be trying to provide stability for them in this entire tournament. The coaches really have a lot of faith in him, and uh, they really expect him to be the guy that uh, helps them finish higher than eighth this, this time around in, uh, in nationals. So for both teams, these are the guys that they're counting on. Exciting matchup today, and we'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes for the opening tip-off. Game time. Uh, Jermaine, why, why don't you tell us about your experience and what you think of the national championship format? Yeah, it's, I think it's a great experience for uh, these, all these players. I'm really excited about the, the next six days um, taking place here at the Savile Center. It's, it's a great tournament, incredible facility. Um, every time I walk into this gym, I'm absolutely amazed at how wonderful it is and how it is right here in the, uh, in the city of Edmonton. Um, we have 50 men's and women's teams from across the country represented here. Uh, in this next six six days, so it's going to be really exciting. Um, you know, the Savile Center, uh, 12 full-size FIBA regulated courts, um, so you have a chance to see multiple games playing at the same time, um, walking just within seconds of each other. Um, I had a chance yesterday to go over to the Lister Center, um, where they have the kids playing, or staying, sorry, um, over at the U of A. It's incredible, the facility that they have there. It's more like a, a hotel rather than a dorm. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for the kids to be in there and to, to be able to interact with one another. I know when these kids get out here on the court, they're absolutely battling one another and you want to come out here and play, but uh, off the court, they have an opportunity to, to get to know one another and spend some time with each other, all staying in the same place. So, And I, I, I think it's a great opportunity for any of these kids who are thinking about possibly playing post-secondary basketball or going to school. It's a great opportunity to kind of to, to live the lifestyle that you might see in the next couple years once you get to the university level of, uh, of dorm life and, and dorm food and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, great it's opportunity. A, it's an exciting beginning. Uh, looks like uh, Alberta had an uneven first possession. Steve, what are you seeing so far? Well, right now I'm seeing that Alberta, with only one possession, clearly was excited to get up the floor and, and get the ball up. Uh, with PEI, right off the bat, you saw McCauley do what their coaches said he was going to do. He was steady, made a nice solid move, and finished through contact. So PEI up 3-0 off a nice Jack McCauley take, and let's see how Alberta responds now after having a rushed first possession. Alberta in their new orange uh, uniforms has a different look for the province this year. It's typically been blue, uh, but as we know, it's not the uniform. That, uh, that wins basketball games. So uh, they'll have to work through the nerves and, uh, and find, uh, find some rhythm getting started. Yeah, you uh, you see Alberta down the last time down the court really pushed the ball up the court. Marvin Washington did a good job of that. 
And uh, they moved the ball around. They missed their shot, but they did a great job of moving the ball around, swinging it. I think everybody touched the ball in the last possession. They got a good shot off. You can definitely see with Alberta that they want to have early offense. And that uh, with it here, starting the game off with a nice three, I think you're going to see a lot of that from these guys because you don't see any traditional guys who are only play on the low post players, only guys that can stay on the wing. There's a lot of interchangeable parts for Alberta, which I think is uh, one of their strengths coming into this tournament. Guys can play multiple positions and hit shots from all over the court. Nice defensive effort by Marvin Washington. That's one of his uh, specialties is taking the charge. Uh, watching here hit that three, wouldn't you guys say that's one of the areas of his game that's improved the most over the last year? Oh, definitely, yeah. You look at this kid, and um, with his athletic ability, I know playing here he, uh, in the city, he often is playing against uh, players that he trumps in size. So um, it's easy for him to get down into the paint and finish at the, at the basket. But for him to extend his game to the three-point line has been absolutely amazing. I think that's going to really help him in his future. I think a guy like here, as he a really nice rolling pass to the basket, a guy like here is always going to be a kid in Edmonton that's going to be bigger and stronger than his competition. But for him to go on to the next level and be successful, uh, hitting an outside jumper will be will be very key for him. So it's really cool to see him start the game off shooting the ball confidently. But here had uh, a, a good tryout for the uh, cadet team, uh, but was cut from the final tryout. And uh, Walk made it to the final tryout, did make the team, but the, both players made a great showing in front of Canada basketball. So we're hoping to see more Alberta players getting into that pipeline. Mm -hmm. I think for Alberta guys, uh, getting an opportunity to go out east, and Jermaine knows this having played for the national team. When they get out there and have the chance to compete against the East Coast kids, I'm sure they'll do just fine. Uh, but again, it's having that opportunity and then getting a chance to measure yourself against a uh, tough competition in, in Ontario and Quebec. And uh, then improving and seeing what you have to do from there in order to, to stick. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I know for these kids and uh, for myself as well, going out east was always a little bit intimidating when we were younger because you always hear about the Toronto kids and the Ontario kids. but. Um, once I, I know one for myself, once I got out there, I, it was just basketball. And you all get on the court, you all tie up your shoes the same way. So um, these kids do a great job of that. PEI is definitely off to a, a good start with putting pressure on the ball and uh, sharing the ball with, with teammates. You can see that that's going to be their emphasis. I visited their practice yesterday and got an idea for how they wanted to play. And it's similar, in a sense, to how Alberta plays, too. They, they don't have a lot of guys that are traditional five and four men. They can move and step away from the basket as they hear it's another jumper. Um, this is an interesting matchup for both teams because in a lot of ways they have similar pieces. So good to see a competitive start from both sides. Yeah, and there you just kind of see a, a, a hair strength. I mean, he goes in then, takes the ball down low, uh, misses the layup, grabs his own offensive rebound, gets the kick out, and comes down and hits the three. Um, you could just kind of see his dominance already. Good hoop from the lock. Way to stay with the play. Alberta seems to be working out its nerves right now and getting more of a rhythm going. Yeah, you can definitely tell, and I'm sure that they feel this as guys, because who wouldn't as 16 and 17 year olds? They're playing in Edmonton. There's a handful of Edmonton kids on the team, so there's got to be a lot of excitement. But if you're not excited to play at the national championships, then that's a, you're an odd child. What, yeah. One of the things that Alberta has this year that they haven't had for the past few years is more athleticism, mm -hmm. uh, not just on the floor with the starting lineup, but coming off the bench as well. So how do you guys see that playing into the uh, outcome of uh, the games over the course of this tournament? Well, I think in seeing some of the other teams that come from other areas of the country that we, all, we don't always get a chance to see, uh, athleticism, length, versatility, it seems to be what are the... Uh, the attributes of the game now that lead to success. As you can see it here is the ability to put the ball on the floor and that right there will just help our point to be made. When your tallest player on the floor is stepping away from the basket and shooting a nice two dribble pull up on a head fake, you're in a good spot. Um, and the great thing is, is PEI showing the same stuff. Uh, Braden White has had two good, great baskets and yeah, the versatility of both these teams are very interesting. Yeah, it really is as you see uh, on the other end of the floor. Uh, White hitting that nice mid-range jumper. Um, it, it's incredible how much the game has changed and how these kids are able to space the floor with their size and their shooting ability, like you mentioned earlier with the hair. 
Um, I mean, I'm just so impressed by this kid. I haven't had the opportunity to see him play a whole lot this past year, but um, the way he's imposing as well on this game so far and uh, knocking down the outside jumper, the two threes, and then um, using the shot fake to get his defender in the air, and then the one dribble pull up that he just knocked down, and his ability to rebound is really impressive. I, I agree with you, Jermaine. Like, we've been working with it here in our Center for Performance program. Last fall, the growth from then mm -hmm. to now is really quite incredible in the versatility of how he's playing. Yeah. That's the good thing about it here that you can see is uh, he, he wants to work at it. And uh, like with every player that's going to get older, uh, if you don't work at it, then you're only going to go so far. So mixing in ability with the desire to get after it and get in the gym is only, I think, going to raise his ceiling more. Um, I'm pretty sure he has all eight of Alberta's points up until that layup. Good execution on the out-of-bounds play. I, Jermaine, you, you hit on something, too, about how the game has changed. I, I'd really love to hear how you two see the game changing since you played in the national championships 15 years ago. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, you, you see the ability of these guys and the strength of these kids. Um, I look at just the, the, the makeup of their bodies in comparison. Uh, Steve and I actually, um, uh, an old uh, teammate of ours, Graham Reed, had brought us some, uh, a couple photos last week of our national championship team back in 99. And we were just looking at the photos and comparing, um, you know, the size of these players in comparison to what we looked like back then and their athletic ability. Um, the game has changed. and. Um, you look when you look at these guys one through five typically can shoot the ball um, back when we were playing in 99 you know you had your two bigs and your three perimeter players and you relied on those three perimeter players to be able to shoot the ball and, and now you see uh, guys like a hair and a walk who are are two of the right now two of the biggest players on the court and they're both playing the guard or wing position and shooting the outside shot so um, the game I think has kind of changed I mean typically uh, more so to the European style of play over the past few years. I would offer this though. The one thing that I have noticed in watching some younger teams play is there is such an emphasis on dribble drive now and such an emphasis on the driving kick that you rarely see kids uh, have the ability to read screens and also defend screens yep. on the uh, on the on the defensive end because you just don't see it as much anymore. Like the last set of bounce play that Alberta ran, they had a nice screen and got a wide open layup. The last play that PEI ran, they had a screen away from the ball and the kid shooting a wide open 10 footer. So the ability for kids to create off the dribble is very interesting, but I also do think that to throw an argument's sake, uh, the use of screens and the reading of screens, I think was more relied on and more understood for us at our age back then. Um, Keenan White, uh, Keenan Wilkie rather, just had a very nice take to the basket. He really has a fearless approach to the game. You can see that with the PEI kids. They're not scared of Alberta. They have come into this game with the idea clearly that we're going to compete. And just because it's in Edmonton and Alberta's hosting does not necessarily mean that we're going to be intimidated of the hosts. Uh, yeah, PEI is impressive so far. And a great defensive uh, play by uh, Number 11 Ramsey, he steps in and takes a charge. I gotta, I gotta say, I absolutely love that. You saw Marvin Washington do it earlier. The two smallest guys on the court stepping in against the big guy and taking the charge, not scared to get their bodies in the way and to, to take the hit. So these guys are out here to battle. Mm -hmm. And to, just to piggyback on what Steve had said earlier, um, yeah, these guys, they're, they're, just, they're just not afraid. You know, they came out, they're showing heart. They understand that they're out here away from home and um, that, that the Alberta team has the home court advantage, but they don't care. They, they know that they came out here for a reason. It's to win basketball games, it's to get better as players. So they're, uh, they're playing their hardest. Good take by, by Awakbeam. He's starting to get going a little bit. You can see a little more uh, confidence as he settles into the flow of the game. A walk, a walk can score in a variety of ways, uh, shooting the shot as well as, as uh, being able to take it to the hoop. Alberta's done a pretty good job on the board so far, mm -hmm. and uh, they've, they've certainly been pushing the pace. Nice penetration by Marvin. Good penetration by Marvin. Tough foul. Good. Chance to go to the line and earn two. Yeah, it's a great job using a hesitation dribble to get his man up and um, go by him and then find Knutson under the basket. Knutson uh, is actually, uh, he's played for basketball Alberta at a variety of levels at the U15, U16, and now at the U17 level. Uh, he's actually an accomplished volleyball player too, uh, coming out of Barhead. And uh, less volleyball, more free throws, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs>
There we are. There we are. There we are. Straighten it out. Cole, yeah. uh, Cole has played for basketball Alberta for a number of years, and uh, he has uh, again grown as a player in confidence and his ability to finish. One thing I would say so far, though, Alberta's had a bit of trouble, and maybe it's just nerves finishing around the basket and some really good scoring opportunities. Yeah, you, I've seen that as well, and um, yeah, I think it is. I think it is nerves. You know, you see these kids and. Uh, I had a great opportunity to go in there and watch them practice yesterday. Um, you know, as they were preparing for the game today, and um, you know, they, they they were the thing I liked about the Alberta team. It reminded me a lot of uh, Steve and my team back in '99. Is that they they you could tell that they all just love each other. Um, they were ready, they were preparing, but they, they had a cool, calm, collected uh, sense about them. You know, I taught, had a chance to talk to, to Coach uh, Jackson the other day, and he said the same thing. He said, "These guys, they." They really enjoy each other. They feel like a family, even though they only had a, a couple months to prepare for this. And uh, you can see it when they, the way that they play on the court. They share the ball and they're moving it around. Number five, Josiah Thomas had a nice steal and then real nice efforts going down the court by Alberta uh, in sending uh, a walk to the line. What, what are you seeing, guys, in terms of the pace that both teams are trying to play at? Well, I think that they're both trying to play in similar fashions and push the ball, get early offense, find shooters on the kickouts. Uh, the advantage that Alberta seems to have had so far is that they have a bit of an size advantage and it's helping them on the glass. Um, but PEI is, is getting in there into the paint, trying to get to the rim. They're playing pretty fearless, so it's offsetting a little bit that I'm sure Alberta has in the rebounding advantage to start. One thing that I've noticed so far is Alberta plays a, an extended pressure defense, but I don't see a lot of physical play inside. What what what, what, what about you guys? Am I seeing it correctly? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, Alberta, you can see they're putting a lot of pressure on the ball full court. Uh, you have Thomas and Marvin Washington up there, quick guards, strong guards, who are able to put pressure on the ball. And it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier about how the game's changed. You don't see the typical bruiser five man out here for Alberta. So. Um, even though they're athletic and they're doing a great job on the rebounds, they're not as strong physically under the basket. As we said earlier, some of their, their strongest, um, longest players are on the perimeter for them. Absolutely. So great Albert, steal by Marvin Washington. Marvin definitely can add that, as we say, a big time shot from Josiah Thomas, who's a JP product out of Edmonton. Marvin is uh, definitely the guy that adds. Uh, the intangible stuff you can see with this team, he's taking a charge, he has a block, he has a couple steals, he's looking to set up teammates. Uh, Marvin was the starting point guard as a 10th grader for the provincial champions in Harry Ainley, so you knew already that Mark coming into this, Marvin was gonna be the guy playing that role as PEI gets another tough bucket underneath. Yeah, you, you saw the game, uh, Marvin started the game and then uh, Thomas came off the bench for him at the point guard position and now you see them both on the court together being able to put that, uh, have that two guard backcourt where they can both defend the ball really well and they can both put pressure on the on the ball full court advantage is going to be a uh, benefit to Alberta in this tournament. I don't know about you guys, I, the guy at the free throw line, Jack McCauley, I, I really like him. He, he pushes the ball, he's aggressive, he's looking to find people. He's And I mean, it, it's an interesting matchup with him and Marvin because Marvin's doing a lot of the same things, but McCauley has a little bit of size on him. So uh, definitely a matchup to keep your eye on as the game goes on. Yeah, well, well Coach Hammer from uh, PEI would say that that's his guy. That's his glue guy and his, uh, his energy guy. So um, yeah, we can definitely keep an eye on this kid. What I'm seeing too is real good chemistry between the PEI kids. They they look for each other. Nobody's yep. trying to take the game over. They, they swing the ball easily and willingly. So very, very impressed with their execution so far. Yeah, well, and I think that's how they stayed in this game so far. They've kept it close throughout the first quarter. Um, they're, they're not as athletic, clearly, as Alberta. Um, they're, not, they're, they're, not, they're losing on the rebounds, but the game is a two-point game. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You can definitely see with the PEI kids that they've sort of weathered the emotional storm of Alberta starting off excited and maybe a touch nervous, but like Jermaine just said, it's a two-point game almost at the end of the first quarter. I'm guessing that PEI is probably where they want to be. Um, good pass from McIntyre. I agree that PEI is where they want to be. I think what they've done is they've exceeded Alberta's intensity. Not that Alberta isn't working hard, but I think uh, I think PEI is working right now. They're executing a bit better than Alberta. Alberta's looking for early shots in their offense. Uh, but they've taken two or three that I think that they would like back. 
And uh, PEI has really, really used good shot selection uh, so far in the game. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting with uh, Coach Parker at the end of the first quarter what he's going to be telling his kids uh, what to look for uh, in, in terms of execution as, a, as the game goes on. A good example of how nerves are probably something that gets in a game like this. Carter, McIntyre, uh, you can tell is just nervous to do the right thing. and. Uh, as the game goes on, I think you'll see these guys settle into more what they're just used to doing. And again, at the end, it's still just playing basketball. Um, Alberta's pressure is definitely something you have to keep an eye on, though, and how that's going to affect the eye over the course of the game. Given the first quarter, we have Alberta up 19 to 16. Alberta, one of the things, fellas, that we've seen so far is Alberta's effectiveness on the offensive glass. Now we're going to look at a couple of highlights, uh, and it's everybody. Marvin, one of the shortest players on the floor, uh, up to Ogot and a, a here and Carter. Well, I think yeah, you, you see just probably in the highlights right here, you got three guys in orange underneath the glass going after the ball, and one of them's your point guard. Thumbs. So thumbs, they're hedging hard. The roller's wide open. We need to hit a relay player. So we'll run out of thumbs. Drag or post exchange. Back is our called play right now. You see Coach uh, Hammer from PEI rallying his team after a very, very good performance in the glass, first half. Glass. What do you think, guys, is going to be a key for Alberta to focus on in the second half, uh, to or the second quarter rather, to try to, to try to turn this tide where it's, it's really just exchanging action. baskets and if really playing toe to toe action. and being played very evenly by PEI. We'll just switch for now. Well, I think like you can you see with, with what wise, Coach Parker is talking about right now, switching we'll seems today. to be a big thing of what Alberta wants to do, Transition like we were talking about before really with having so many interchangeable parts. Uh, uh, sure I'm sure they're going to still try and utilize that to their advantage. Okay. I'd like to see Alberta settle down a little bit more in the half court. They've got some good early offense, but there's been a lot of bobbled passes. There's been a lot of uh, throwing the ball to spaces that guys aren't at just yet. Um, so maybe a little more patience in the half court and a little more uh, settled in with, with what they want to do in, in the fast break. Jermaine, what would you like to see, uh, well, and we'll focus on Alberta, we'll go to PEI in a second, but what would you like to see Alberta do on the defensive end? Uh, Steve mentioned the switching the screens. Is there anything else that they could improve on? Yeah, honestly, I, I would love the defensive effort from these guys, especially from the guards right now, Thomas and uh, Marvin Washington at the top. They're putting pressure on the ball full court. Uh, I would like to see a little bit of help side, more help side. I saw um, the guards get beat off the top maybe two times in the first quarter where nobody rotated from the help side. So um, use their athleticism and their length to come over. Once the guys are beat from the top, a little bit more communication coming from help side to use your body to really stand in there. As we get as we get started in the second half, uh, Steve, why don't you run through who the lineup for Alberta is at the present time? Oh, uh, we got some new faces in here. We have Mason Gibb, who's actually our lone Alberta kid from down south, and he is you know, that's number nine for Orange, and he's actually an accomplished football player who has a younger sister playing for the U15 team for Alberta as well. Uh, we got our first look at Ogot Ogot, one of the uh, twin brothers from Edmonton who finished second this year in the city championships and at uh, the Provincials for O'Leary High School. And we are also getting a look at uh, Cole Knudsen from Barhead, again, the volleyball player. Uh, so it's a little bit of a different lineup with the here sitting and with McIntyre sitting. Uh, so we'll see how, I'm sure they want to play around and see how lineups work for them in their first game and uh, see who can contribute. And, and you see the, the one constant though is Marvin still being in there definitely with his floor general and leadership role again with a great pass on the roll. There's the example again, Cole on a beautiful uh, slip and Marvin on a very nice pass. That's a makeable shot and over the course of the game Alberta's going to have to find a way to finish. Yep. But the good thing is, I think early on, especially in the first game, they're getting good looks. We said in the break that maybe it was, uh, you'd like to maybe see them settle down in the half court and, and get, a, get a good look. And, and that was just that. A really nice ball move from Dre. Great, great ball move. Um, Jermaine, why don't you take the, the rein on this one? I like how PEI is making an extra pass and then finding another pass with Alberta making a good first rotation and maybe being slow in the second. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. 
from what I'm seeing is, uh, like we spoke about in the first quarter, the, the nerves from Alberta are getting to them a little bit, I think. I think they have very high expectations for themselves in this game. They've come in and the nerves have shown a little bit. Where on the other end, I think PI, it looks like they've come in with nothing to lose. They know they're on the road. Yeah. They know they're playing against the home team. They just said, hey, let's go out here and play some basketball. They're doing a great job of moving the ball. You see a great drive and dish, kick out over there. Um, they're doing they're doing a great job moving the ball. I think they're playing with confidence. Good hands by Mason Gibb on that one. Mason's hands, uh, his uh, his foot speed, the way he runs the court. You and can see he has, uh, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a football touch to what he does. Good hands, good feet, gets out and goes, aggressive on defense. That that sort of toughness really seems to be giving Alberta a bit of lift on the defensive end. Yep, absolutely. Good driving kick. If P, I, yeah, if they start knocking these shots down, you can see that's what they want to do, and and that is their strength. They're making Alberta's defense collapse, and they're getting good looks. So first game of the tournament, maybe a little bit hesitant on shots, but if those start dropping, it's going to be an interesting game. Yeah, it looks like Alberta now. They're really trying to punch the ball down low. And, uh, and the, they're, they're big kids. They have to do a better job of getting low ceiling and staying on balance. You saw a couple times now that they've tried to go down low and have turnovers on the on the, the pass down to the post. Uh, absolutely. I think I think too what we're seeing I, I, right now. I would say not that Alberta's effort uh, is is lacking, but they haven't found their the rhythm yet with their effort. Where PEI. Definitely, they're meeting. Uh, and in. They're meeting the guy with the ball. Otherwise, we're going to get reversal. Set another ball screen. We're looking to get into the paint. Now, if the player gets stuck here, we are kicking the ball by getting on two feet and finding an open teammate. Every time there's penetration, let's have someone dive to the basket from the weak side. So if penetration comes in here, weak side player, I want diving to the basket. Mitch, if you're running in transition. As a trailer, run drag, get Marvin a look. Keep pushing on D, team. Here we go. That was Coach Jackson Parker, one of the real fine young coaches in the province. In your conversations with uh, Coach Parker, uh, fellas, uh, what's been your impression, Jermaine? Yeah, I really like him. You know, I, I had a chance to speak to him uh, yesterday at their practice quite a bit. And uh, he's really excited, an enthusiastic coach. Um, I think he really knows how to get his players to play for him. He understands the makeup of this team. He really understands the game of basketball. So uh, it was really nice to, to sit down and have a conversation with him and, and just kind of pick his brain a little bit about the tournament and the upcoming week and when his expectations. So I like the way that he coaches. I like the way that he handled his practice and his players yesterday. I think one of the things that stands out so well about Jackson is he has such a calm demeanor. Uh, even just in that timeout, he explains things very clearly, what he wants, all the stuff that he's saying is bang on, getting into the lane, two-foot jump stop, finding teammates, having a dive on the weak side. I, I've, I've been really impressed with Jackson as well. Uh, he, he's very heady, he's very composed, and he knows what he's talking about, and clearly the kids like to play for him. So, uh, good guy to be leading the, the Alberta kids. As you see, another tough shot from Jack McCauley. He's, Jack's tough. Tough player. He is really tough. He is competing, and what a good game for him to start off playing against a guy like Marvin. Uh, two guys getting a chance to play against each other in the opening game that are really solid competitors. And, and Steve, you know this. Um, from our days of playing, it's, it's hard for these kids to not to, to be on the internet or looking at their, their opponents and, and, you know, figuring out the great things about them and wanting to come out here and battle and, and to compete and to prove your, your, uh, your greatness, to prove what you can do against these guys. So Absolutely. for these two point guards to be going at it like this is awesome. We actually have, it's kind of a unique situation for the PEI team. Uh, number 14 at the line right now, Noah Giddings. PEI is allowed two older players a year to play for their under 17 provincial team. Noah's one of them, and then number 10, Keenan Wilkie, who is at half court right now, is the other. They're both committed to UPEI, and uh, clearly are, are big contributors to the team, tough guys, finding open people. I really liked how Giddens has been hitting the glass and is battling down there with the Alberta guys, so you can see for the UPEI team and Coach Tim Kendrick out there that they're good pickups for him and his program. Again, Alberta trying to to, uh, to find some sort of rhythm. The one thing I've observed with uh, PEI is their ability to reverse the ball 
and execute on the on the ball reversal side where Alberta right now seems to want to get the ball back to the middle and attack the side the ball came from. What kind of impact does that have on spacing fellas? Um, I'd say that with PEI you're going to get more advantage of finding an open three when you reverse the ball well say driving baseline find the baseline drag and then making another pass to the top on the second rotation that Alberta's been a bit slow on. Whereas Alberta, Alberta you can tell they're they're driving to score as the walk hits a really tough pull up. You can almost see the PEI's driving with the intent of trying to find shooters. Um, so again like we mentioned before PEI if they start knocking some shots down this could be uh, an interesting game from uh, for Alberta but Alberta definitely puts the, the pressure on PEI's defense by driving looking to score first. Yeah uh, just to piggyback on what Steve said um, when these guys has a nice defensive play we see then finish the like other Keenan end. Wilkie. Yeah. Good yeah, hands Wilkie. Wilkie. Wilkie again to the ball to the boards hard he, he finishes with confidence finishes with strength. Well, you see, I think you're seeing kind of a reoccurring thing here with PEI. They have good hands. Like when guys from Alberta are getting in there, like getting into the lane, their hands reaching for the ball, tipping at the ball, uh, swiping at it. Like they are not letting Alberta get into the lane uncontested. And for guys, for a team like Alberta that wants to put the ball down first, I think PEI has a great strategy. They want to space it out, and then they want to be active with their hands. You look at the scoreboard right now. We got 24, 23. This is stop, score, stop time. Well, first we'll listen to. Uh, Coach Hammer. We got from, our stop. Uh, PEI. Let's go down and run our stop. Okay. Let's spread them out motion. Let's spread them out motion. Okay. Actually, no. Let's go. Cur let's get him a curl right off the bat. Okay. Run a four up and then right into motion. Don't force it, but let them react to it. And if we don't get it, we got the screen and roll. Try to get Jack or Keenan on the weak side if we need that three. Okay. We get screen and roll action. That means the guy on the weak side sitting there ready to shoot that three. Got it? Okay. There you see Coach Hammer emphasizing spacing, looking for your teammate. Uh, I was mentioning before, like, look at the lead changes. Now we're back to 24 23 uh, PEI. They just refuse to go away, and certainly, as uh, you guys have both pointed out, they're, they're not intimidated at all. No, I, I think that was, that was a great timeout. Uh, he wanted to run something, decided not. We're going to run something different. So we're going to see. We're going to see what they come. I'm curious what they're going to run here. They're running something called four down and they want to get they want Alberta to react to it. So this is going to this could be a good look. I'm excited to see this one because the more I see these guys the more I like PI. They're tough. They're really tough. Yeah there again you see the dribble that's penetration. You see the dribble move. penetration the kick out. Alberta has to close out hard on the shooter and he drives by from tough, the baseline tough run. for Max Ramsey. He's had a couple Great buckets move. that are that have been really impressive because I mean as you can see from his body, he's a stocky little guy. He's, not, he's pretty fearless getting in there. Pretty fearless, and, and what I see with PEI is they're going at the rim. They are not intimidated at is. all. Uh, Alberta's pulling back on their layups yep. right now. They're trying not to get blocked. PEI's just going to the basket. Which is interesting because PEI doesn't have, I don't know if they've blocked the shot yet, um, but they what they've done so well with their active hands is they have guys second guessing when they're putting it down, and they have guys uh, changing shots and altering shots when they get to the rim, even if no one's blocking it. So you got to figure right now the pace favors PEI and the Alberta kids just to see how the pace is going right now uh, need to settle in and just maybe finish through some contact. Yeah. If, they, if someone blocks a shot, then someone blocks a shot. Yeah. And, then, and then again, you see the nerves right there. Yeah. A wide open defensive rebound that just goes off the hands of a here. Mm -hmm. um, but what Steve said before the timeout is, is exactly right. Um, Alberta's, uh, or PEI, sorry, their ability on the offensive and defensive end right now to be playing as a nice team. Guy. They move the ball around. You can see their confidence level has gone up since the first quarter. They're feeling themselves right now. They're feeling good about what they're doing. They're moving the ball great. And on defense, they're shuffling their feet and they're coming from help side. You can see every time which is something that I know coaches mention often, but a lot of players don't do, is there are hands everywhere. I've said this a couple times, but there are hands everywhere for PEI. They're bothering, they're bothering the guys on the catch. They're bothering them when they put it down. Um, really impressive from PEI because you can tell that Alberta's more athletic, but as far as guys keeping them in front, PEI's doing a great job with keeping the ball in front and keeping the ball out of the paint without a you see Jack line it up. Yeah. There we go. That, nice that possession, we saw Alberta fall back into a zone um, for the first time in the game. And P.I. did a great job of just moving the ball to the wing and knocking down the, the quick shot. What I'm seeing with Alberta is they're going to need somebody to, uh, somebody to step forward and really spark them and settle them down. That was a nice pass and cut 
between a here. Great cut from Walk. From a walk. Yeah. So, they, they, but they're going to need to be steady and more solid like that, right? They need to bring their uh, effort up. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think again, you know, you're in the second quarter now, so big hey, Jack. Oh man, man. This kid's nice. <laughs> he, yeah, he's living up. He's living up to what their coach talked about yesterday. Yeah. He is. He's tough. He's fearless. He's aggressive, and he's pretty quick. He's putting guys on their heels because it's not like the guys guarding him are slow foot. He's putting Marvin and he's uh, he's putting uh, Josiah Thomas and then the other guys who are handling the point guard duties for Alberto on their heels. He's yeah. he's a tough player. Well, and, and they they have good technique, lots of shot fakes, lots yes. of hesitation, lots of change of pace, not just going to the basket. No. It's not head down. There's jabs. There's there's a, a, a one or two second count to let guys like their coach just said in the timeout react to things. He's they're reacting to fakes. They want to see if they're if they'll sell it, if they'll buy a jab, if they'll buy a head fake, and then they go, which is something you don't see too often. A lot of times, kids will get the ball and put the head down, and just go. That's a good look. I, I just love the way that PI is executing their offense mm -hmm. right now. They're getting it really good it seems like every time down the court they're getting a wide open shot and they might not be making them all, but they're getting the looks that they want to get in their offense. And I think uh, th that's a good look. That was a good penetration that's by good. Marvin. Walk has really been trying to be that glue guy to bring them back. He's had uh, three real important plays for Alberta right now. So. Is that going to be enough to spark uh, with the walks effort uh, here hitting a shot uh, for the last two minutes? It's going to be interesting to see how Alberta is able to bring this quarter home. I think offensively you can see where Alberta needs points to come from. Uh, obviously, a here needs to score and a walk needs to score. Um, in that in that last series, you saw Marvin make a really great pass to Carter going into the short corner, and it came up. It, it shot it a little bit long. But for the Alberta guys, they have to do that. They have to step up and make wide open 10, 12 footers when they get them because they're not getting much of them against PEI's kind of packed in defense travel. Um, but uh, again, you can see a walk is aggressive with the ball. A here is looking to shoot the ball, and that's clearly by design. That's not. Uh, so it's uh, it's been an interesting first half so far with with how PEI has uh, been shot the ball. You hear see you see Jack McCauley lining up one of his threes when Alberta went to zone. It was one of the he, he's certainly been the spark plug, hasn't he been? Uh, to uh, for PEI to surge ahead the way they have. Absolutely, what their what so their coach said he would do. We out of this, right? So we're going to run it at at um, Jack's side. Now Max, pay attention. He's going to come through. Max slips down to that corner, right? So we got three here, three here, and then you guys are are ready to roll into the center, right, Jack? You've got rollers. Yeah. And you got Max in the corner, right? So I'm dribbling over to you. You're yeah, we'll dribble, dribble, you're dribble entry. Yeah, dribble dribble on entry. On you take the ball? Doesn't matter. You're taking the ball. No, you're taking the ball. You're taking the ball. You're dribbling at me. No. I put on two got it. You're gonna. Okay. Let's go run white one time. Hey, hey. No, no second okay. shots. Okay. Make those refs blow those whistles. Get your butts out and make those refs blow the whistles. Just battle. Just battle. There's Five Coach Hammer rebound, addressing okay. the offensive Five rebounding that Alberta's had some success Thank with uh, in the quarter. Excellent timeout, fellas. Phenomenal. Yeah. I, I love the I love his points of emphasis. I love how he takes that 30 seconds and he gets his points in there quick. His players are responsive. They do a good job of communicating. You, had, you saw players in there asking a couple questions, making sure they were all on the same page. And you heard him um, make a point of defensive box outs and no second chance points. He knows the athleticism of, of Alberta is the one thing that could hurt them today. Uh, he makes the point for them to box out don't allow any second chance points he knows they're doing a good job on their first points to try and get the rebound and push the ball down on the court and execute on the other end let's see what they run now they were drawing something up called white looks like they're going to try and get macaulay coming up top for a look they do they got that and he hits and it hits it <laughs> now see in, in my opinion alberta has to be more more aware of this this is the second or third three that jack's made um they're coming out of a timeout you got to expect they're going to have a quick hitter you can't let your, the other team's best shooter come up to the top of the key uncontested and shoot a wide open three. Um, but yeah, again, this uh, Macaulay, he's cagey. He's, he's finding a way to get looks. You gotta love how these kids execute. They come out of the timeout, yeah. traveled there, but they come out of the timeout, they execute their offensive play, and then on the other end, they do exactly what Coach said. They go off after the defensive board. You see all five whites in there mm -hmm. crashing the glass hard, not let, allowing Alberta to get their second chance point. I really love how Coach Hammer is, has taught these kids the dribble drive so well, looking for your teammates swinging the ball, but out of timeouts, running really well executed and well designed quick hits. Well, you can see what the great thing that PEI is doing is Marvin has a nice take to the rim that he needs, needs to put in there is uh, 
they're in the spots, so they're not looking for guys as much as they're looking for spots. It's, it's an interesting thing with the dribble drive offenses. When you're driving, you need to turn and find a guy. If he's not in that spot, it'll be a turnover. But PEI does a great job of getting to those spots, and then they're shooting with confidence now that they're starting to drop. Early shot in the shot clock yeah. with uh, towards the end of the half. I'm sure Coach Hammer would like that one back. Final 10 seconds of the quarter. And a late, yeah, late, late whistle. Late whistle, but a good roll by Carter McIntyre. Another good pass from Marvin to find the open guy. You can see with PEI, they want to push him out on the pick and roll. They're, they're going over the top of the screen and they're hedging. So they want to push Marvin away from the basket. Let's see what Alberta has for these last two seconds to finish the half. Smart move by PEI going the zone. Mm -hmm. Smart move from PEI to make shift things up. Score at halftime, 37-29 PEI. We're going to be back in just a minute with Coach Hammer from PEI. Great job. Nice job. Score at halftime, 37-29 Prince Edward Island over Alberta. I'm here with head coach John Hammer from PEI. Coach, excellent first half. What do you think the keys were to your success? Well, it's coming down to defense right now. We, we've done a great job of, of presenting in front of players, but second shots are killing us, and we've got to stop that, and I think if we do that, we'll be in good shape. You, have, you seem to have real strong guard leadership. Could you just talk to us a bit about the impact that has on your team? Oh, these guys have been together forever. I've been coaching against these or with these kids since they were six years old. They know how to play basketball. We're just here. We're lucky to be at such a great event to showcase some of that talent. It's great to see, Coach. Thank you very much, and best of luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Score once again at halftime, 37-29, Prince Edward Island over Alberta. We'll be back for the second half action in just a minute. Here we are bar back at uh, Savile Community Sports Center for the start of the second half between the PEI and Alberta U-17 boys provincial teams. We, uh, to start the half, our leading scores for PEI and for Alberta, we're actually exactly the two players that we said you had to be watching if you were tuning in. For PEI, the leading scorer is Jack McCauley with 11 points, two assists, and a rebound. And our other featured player, Braden White, with eight points and four rebounds. For Alberta, Awak Piam leads them with 11 points and five rebounds. And here has nine points and five rebounds. So, players that we were watching, and here was a quick basket to get that up to double digits. Interesting yeah. that Coach Parker came out, went into a flex set, Jermaine. You can see they went right, went right away to some structure. Yeah. Yeah, you saw in the first half, Alberta really struggled offensively to find a, a rhythm. So, you know, they went in the halftime, looked like they regrouped a little bit, found a way to get an easy basket. If Alberta wants to, I think, give themselves the best chance to win this game, they have to find more easy baskets. You, they're working too hard with trying to put the ball down, trying to shoot contested pull-ups, especially with the way the PEI is defending them with high hands, active hands. They're never, they're not shooting a lot of uncontested shots. So if they can get some easy ones on slips and reads, that would really help them climb back into this game with them down eight. Yeah, and there's Jack coming off another screen. Look. I think for Alberta, they're going to have to find scoring away from a walk and a here yes. as well. You know, they're going to have to have some scoring off the bench. You saw the halftime stats. These guys both had um, near double figure points. Um, and they're still down by eight. So uh, this Alberta team is going to have to find some scoring elsewhere. It's a great take from here, I guess. Great take from here. Well, this is Paul Sir, Steve Sir, and Jermaine Buckner coming to you for the PEI Alberta game. You just hit on a key point, Steve, looking for easier baskets. Uh, Ahir has taken it strong to the hoop twice. I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think that when you stop attacking the basket, that last uh, last quarter, there was only one foul against PEI. That was largely due to Alberta settling for softer mm -hmm. shots. I think with with what we talked about before, I, I'm, Alberta had a distinct rebounding advantage, and for PEI only had to have committed one foul is kind of interesting. Also, too, hearing what we heard on the PEI bench of what the coach wanted. Box these guys out, make the refs blow their whistles. So for, for PEI, you can tell they're gonna be physical, but Alberta's gotta get in there and respond too because 
if, if you're on the other side with Alberta as well, you got to be saying the same thing. Make the refs blow their whistle. So if they're getting a lot of rebounds, but alter, you know, adjusting their shots, uh, finishing away from contact, the refs aren't going to be able to bail them out. So they're going to need to use their advantages on the glass into either buckets or free throws. Nice, but yeah. He's come out of the gate. Keenan Wilkie's come out of the gate. You know, aggressive, two strong takes going right, finishing right at the glass. Jermaine, do you see the sense of urgency now, between between the two teams? Who, who do you think plays with the most sense of urgency so far? Yeah, honestly, this PEI team has really impressed me uh, this afternoon. Um, they're coming out with a lot of energy, confidence. Um, you saw in the first quarter, the early, early on in the first couple of minutes, it looked a little shaky. But since then, they've come out with confidence, a sense of urgency. You see them, uh, especially after hearing the coach in the timeouts, they've come out, they've responded well to what he said, and uh, they're really pushing the ball to Alberta. Well, in Alberta, I think uh, Coach Parker is working real hard to help the kids understand that they have to play with that urgency. They have to do a better job of helping out. Uh, but PEI, they just keep going at it. They just keep going at the hoop. Well, you can see now uh, as a walk has a nice aggressive take to the bucket. And, oh, man, man. Um, one of the interesting things that PEI's come out of the half to, to start with is they don't have McCauley bringing the ball up anymore. Excellent bit of officiating, guys. Yeah, they have to let that. That's a continuation play, and they have to let him. He finished through contact. But you're going to see with PEI coming up, they have Logan McDonald, number 13, handling the point guard responsibilities, and McCauley's playing off the ball a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how Alberta adjusts to that, and it'll be interesting to see how PEI adjusts to that, having uh, having McCauley maybe work off the ball and try and get shots that way as Awak finishes a three-point play. I really like how Awak and Ahir have come out. That had to have been a point of emphasis at halftime, that these guys need to stop settling, use their athleticism and length to get to the basket. Again, one foul for PEI at halftime. If you are going to turn it into that kind of game, then they're probably going to win. The Alberta needs to use their length and athleticism and strength in getting to the basket and forcing the refs to either make a call or get a bucket. You're, you're exactly right, Steve. I think... Um from what I'm seeing, Alberta really needs to pick up the ball, the ball pressure a little bit. You saw in the first half, and Paul, you made a point about the full court pressure from the guards and Marvin and and, uh, and Thomas picking up the ball full court. You saw down there that he, the the penetration, you just got into the lane a little too easy for me. So mm -hmm. I think the, they need to use their speed and their athleticism, like Steve said, and really pick up the, defensively. The, the, I think that's a great point, Jermaine, too, because the, the two layups great. that Steve pointed out. He got to the basket so easily and with no help on that side. People are, you know, whenever they lift, they're going for the fake and allowing the lane to open up. But see, now this is what I'm, this is what I was talking about earlier. Alberta, a walk had a really nice take. Okay, misses a tough bucket. PEI throws a little bit of a, a, a lazy pass over the Dean. Uh, Thomas picks it off. But then they're coming down and they have numbers and they throw a, a, a strange alley-oop play. I think that's what we're talking about with nerves. You, you can't necessarily chalk up the nerves now. They have to settle in and get good buckets. And when they have an advantage like that, they have to take advantage of it. So guy, guys have to settle down and maybe not look for the home run, but just try and get on base. Just make make a good play. Yeah. Make the good play. Now, that's another example right there. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. It's not so much nerves anymore. It's discipline. Yes. You, you see the PEI team, they just... Okay. I think discipline's the right word. As you see, uh, we're seeing our guy Braden White go up. He misses the shot. But then we have Noah Giddings, UPEI commits, finishing it up. There again, though, that's PEI, what they've been doing so far in this game. Guy misses a shot, but there's someone right there who's making a play on the ball. Nice cut by Giddings. But there, and the exact same thing happens uh, just in the reverse. We have uh, Braden White crashing, crashing the glass. They are making... Alberta have to do the things that they talked about. No one's boxing out, and, and they're getting rewarded for it. And right now, PEI is getting to the ball. Alberta is not getting to the ball. Yeah. They're not screening out. They're not executing on the defensive end. Nice shot. It's a that's a good look for a walk, but yep. it's there's a lot of pressure on a walk right now. And, and here, it's it, it's looking to seem if if they're not going to put the ball in the bucket, then the ball's not going to get in there. So. Other guys from Alberta intelligently have to be able to, to pick their spots and, and see where they can contribute, but um, it's going to start on defense for them. They're going to need, need to get on the glass, and they're going to uh, have to keep, uh, like Jermaine was mentioning earlier, a, a better level of ball pressure if they're going to get PEI out of their sets and make them a little uncomfortable. 
And players like Mitch uh, Barthold, who just had the nice offensive rebound, got it back to a walk, and he got fouled. Mm -hmm. he, he got the offensive rebound, so they need the hustle plays from everybody. What I'm seeing right now is just a, run, a real uneven effort by players that they're standing around watching. When you come into the game, you've got to be ready to contribute. You've got to be ready to, to get after the ball and make a difference for your team. And right now, PEI is definitely taking it to Alberta in terms not just of effort, execution, but also finishing. So uh, if Alberta Jump wants to get Jump back Jump in this center. game, that's going to have to come from all five players on the floor. Yeah, I think what you said earlier, Paul, about a sense of urgency. You know, you can see that clearly. Each possession for these guys, for PEI, I mean, matters. And that's a great example right there. It just doesn't seem like each possession matters. you got to take care of that basketball as you see Alberta with another bad turnover. PEI has not done that on the other end. I can only remember a couple turn bad turnovers in the entire game so far. They've done a great job. They come down, compose, they take care of the ball, and they execute their offense. That, Jermaine's exactly right. You can see that PEI, from a possession standpoint, is valuing more. They're getting a shot every time, and if they're not, they're, they're at least getting a good look in and around their sets. Alberta hasn't shown yet the we got the ball, now we have to make it work for us. They're giving it right back after making good defensive stands or, or getting a good rebound. So uh, for these guys, like Jermaine says, we're, we're seeing some habits and some tendencies now that you can't just chalk up to nerves uh, with the Alberta boys. So hopefully they'll settle in and they'll start playing uh, playing basketball with uh, with some value of the ball and uh, and, and finding uh, finding good shots as here gets to the basket. Good, good D by PEI. They're doing a great job defensively. Like mm -hmm. we said earlier, this Alberta team, their bench is going to have to step up a little bit because there's a lot of pressure on here in a walk. You see offensively, they continue to go to them over and over, and it's going to be a lot of pressure. You, these kids got to play a lot of games over the next six days, um, and, and other guys are going to have to step up and, and, and show some relief as you see a great shot right there. It's a great shot a with confidence. Look. Yeah, it's a good look. And they, they need that from their bench. They need guys to come off with confidence, to play with confidence, to shoot the ball with confidence, to give them a little bit of a boost. Absolutely. I would say going back to something that we talked about at the beginning of the game, the difference now with, with this Alberta team, say compared to 15 years ago with, with Jermaine, and, Jermaine and my, my team, is uh, a large emphasis on what we did was uh, importance of possession and uh, importance of uh, of valuing the ball. Uh, not to say that, that that isn't a focus for the Alberta team, but I have a feeling if Jermaine and I had thrown a couple of the passes that have been thrown, we would not have been in the game much longer. So um, hopefully as the game settles in, in the second half, the Alberta boys realize that if you're giving the ball right back, you can't, you can't climb back into the game when you're down 10. Well, you guys know from playing, when you're not on your game, and your uh, your head isn't totally into it. When you try to come out of what I would call a fog, you don't just turn the on switch on. You've got to get there through effort. Yeah. And I sort of see that right now with the Alberta kids. Like you're seeing a greater effort, but it's still uneven. It is. I would agree with you. Uh, like right now, they get a good steal. Now let's see what what they get. Great, great take. Great take. But that's better. At least you're getting a steal and you're going to the rim and you're putting the onus on the refs to make a call as opposed to making a steal and then trying to maybe get a little bit cute with it, so to speak. So we're gonna see Iwaki to steal at, at half court in just a minute and get to the bucket. Was, was a good, uh, the, the replay didn't work, but it was a great heads up play by a walk to, to make a turnover at half court, then to go right to the basket. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Steve, make the officials make the call because you're being aggressive getting to the rim. And I think just that whole theme of aggressiveness on both ends of the court for Alberta is what they have to get from all five guys all the time. Yeah, and you need a healthy balance, especially with these kids. They're so young, you know. Exactly. They, they, they haven't matured as players. They don't necessarily understand their bodies even yet. So for a walk to, to have the sense and to, to notice, hey, I got to take this to the rack rather than pulling up for three. He had, the, he had the three. Rather than pulling up, he used his athletic ability to get to the rack and draw the foul. You see with Alberta right now, they have a chance to get something in the half court. Now they're going to have to grind a little bit. And, uh, there is a size advantage here with a here. It's a good pass to the corner with Gibbs. Here's one thing I saw, fellas, on that last ball reversal. Uh, Gibbs caught the ball up top. PEI, when they catch it up top, reverse it right away. Yeah. Automatically swing the ball. Where, 
right now Alberta is yeah. catching up top. It's slow with it. Slow on the reversal allows the defense to adjust, which takes away their advantage, at the athletic advantage that Alberta clearly has. Yeah. But because they're giving uh, PEI the opportunity to dig in on defense, mm -hmm. that negates that. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jermaine, if you want to go with that one. No, no, you're exactly right, Paul. And um, on that last set, you saw they really wanted to get the ball down to here on the post. But once the ball was in, entered into him, you saw the help side jump all the way from the far corner. P.I. jumped right into help side and said, hey, if he wants to make a drive here, he's going to have to go against two guys. So he was forced to make the kick out, and I think they stepped out of bounds on the sideline. I think I think P.I.'s made a great choice in who they're going to have go on here uh, as another great take. And uh, I, I think P.I.'s made a fantastic choice. With Max Ramsey being the one that's guarding here now, he, he's physical. As we see PEI get the get the rebound and push the ball up the floor. But here, here is what PEI has been doing so well: is they've been pushing the ball intelligently. They get that rebound, and you can see right there, got it, went right away. Not trying to get cute with it, not trying to do anything with it. They're just pushing. So good defense translating into good early offense, and then finishing aggressively at the rim. Post entry motion, flare screen. Dive, rise, out of offense. We're still looking to transition first. We're gonna pick up full court, pick up full court. So that means one, two, three are on guards. If you are guarding 10, understand, he will look to go right every single time. He'll look to go by you to score. Look to go by you to score. Pick up after a score right away. Next offense possession is 41 for a hero call, whoever has the better matchup. If you are the last person, when a shot goes up, transition defense, please. Here we go. It's a good time now from Coach Parker because he just brought up what has been evident in the in the second in the third quarter. Excuse me, is number ten Keenan Wilkie has gone right every time and has finished three times going right at the glass on the right side of the basket. So again, give credit to Wilkie because he is pushing the ball right to the spots that he wants to get to. But the Alberta boys are going to have to. I have to understand that this kid needs wants to go right. We're going to have to take that away from them. So, so, so far they have not been able to make PEI uncomfortable on defense. Not yet. They were at the start when there was a little more uh, nerves and, and things like that. But uh, what, what do you think, Jermaine? Because I, I think PEI is kind of kind of feeling pretty comfortable on offense. Right now. Yeah. Definitely, not just offensively, defensively as well. You saw coaching the timeout, said they wanted to run four for either Knutson or, or Ahir, whoever had the mismatch. They tried to get the ball down to Ahir, and again, defensively, PEI just came together as a team. They rotated, they did a great job, and they forced a 24 second shot clock violation. Mm -hmm. And where Alberta, when they start looking at film on that, on that play that you're just mentioning, Jermaine, nobody came and replaced the entry pass. So Ahir did not have options from the low post when they brought the double team. Exactly right, Paul. And like you said, offensively, these kids are just playing with confidence right yep. now. They have a sense of urgency. I, I, we can't say it enough. Great backup there by here. Good cut by Great backup. Yeah. And a great find. Yep. Good great cut, find. Good pass from Dragao, who you could see they were jumping the passing lane, and here made the good cut. And Dragao had enough patience to wait for the, the play to develop. There we go. There he is. That could be one of those plays. Yes. That could be one of those plays. That's special. Yep. That's special. This is exactly what we were talking about. This is exactly what we were talking about in the beginning of the game with the here and why he was a player to watch is for plays like that. Because as you can see in uh, in that last play, a steal at half court, handling the ball comfortably, coming in for a dunk over a kid finishing with contact. That's a kid going into 11th grade. So for the Alberta team, the more you see that, the more success you're going to have because, I mean, my goodness, like, how many guys at this tournament are going to be able to, to put together plays like that? And this is where Coach Parker's adjustment, extending the pressure, again, accentuating Alberta's athletic advantage and the response by the players immediately for a big-time play that helpfully, from Alberta's standpoint, is going to help shift the momentum. Yeah, and I think that's that's a... That's a yeah, that's a game changer. I think if I if I saw correctly, they also called an intentional foul there, right? So here you see the finish from Mahir. Um, the most impress impress impressive part of that play to me is not even the dunk, it's the steal at half court. You see him use his length and athleticism. The, yeah, they thought it was a clear pass, you Joel, know, and he jumped the passing lane. Listen. I think in two dribbles was able to get to the rim and finish one, right? with contact. Set the screen, curl, curl. 
If we don't have anything, that's fine. What I want us to run is four. And I want us to down screen for here on the strong side. Just down screen for here. Then I want us to space out. So instead of running this screen, here, 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 and one top. They will pack the key on you. You should be licking your chops, you should be licking your shop, you should be licking your shops. Do you understand our offensive possession? We're still in pickup, full court. Here we go, team. Yeah, and then we, we see the three-point play. Alberta's going to get the ball back, so they're going to have a chance to score again. That could be a five- or six-point turnaround. Those are game-changing plays that they just made right there. It'll be interesting to see now with Alberta, because you, you saw in the timeout, they want to run a play that they call four, and clearly they want to get a here look. Can they execute? Because that's been a bit of an issue so far. So hopefully uh, they, can get, uh, they can get a good look out of this set and, and get back into this game. And as Coach Jackson said in that great time, look, out, great, great look. look, great pass by it here. And I think that's the first time I've seen them come out of a timeout, timeout and really execute. Right, great dive by Knudsen too. Because PI is doing exactly what Coach Jackson said they would. They are packing it in. They are getting into the paint and they are being active with their hands. So for here to make that look, that's been, that was a great three, four sets for her here. Tough. Tough bucket. Good defense, tough bucket. Better offense. And you just, you know, you can't fold Alberta's effort on that. Now, how do they respond? They've got momentum. Yeah. Is it an emotional adrenaline shot or is it a sustained effort? We'll see. You really got to give credit. You got to give credit to uh, number 11 on uh, on PEI, Max Ramsey. He's He's got the toughest defensive assignment. He's given up some size to here. And he's down there on offense, bat battling for offensive rebounds. He had that tough bucket on the other end. I, I, I really like this Ramsey kid, too. Uh, he's really tough because he's got probably the toughest matchup on the court. Um, as you see, I hear drop off to Knudsen real quick for, uh, for a nice, easy two. Yeah, you, see a, you see a hair come out of the game and a walk come in for him. It should be um, interesting. Yeah, try to give him a little bit of rest at the end of the third quarter so they can make a, a push near the fourth quarter. Great adjustment by Coach Parker. Uh, there were times in the first half where both Ahir and uh, Awak were off the court, and they really struggled offensively. So he's really substituted intelligently to keep one on the floor at all times. Two free throws from Josiah Thomas. Thomas makes it a six-point game. So Alberta's in this. They have a minute and a half left. Let's see how they finish the quarter and how PEI responds to this too now. 3.33 left, Alberta down 12, now down six in uh, just two minutes. Uh, so let's uh, see how they finish the quarter off. They've extended their pressure and uh, done some creative substituting. So has PEI. So uh, see if PEI has the ability to respond. Yeah, these ne this next minute and a half, these next couple possessions are gonna be really important to, to determine the flow of the game going to the fourth quarter as we mm -hmm. see Good look Thomas. Thomas. Open at the top of the key, knocks down the three ball. Big shot from Thomas. He's given them a big lift with his defensive pressure. Uh, two big free throws before. Steps into a nice wide open three pointer, shoots it with confidence. So a nice lift off the bench for the Alberta boys. Yeah. Three point game with 50 seconds to go. Not many defensive breakdowns by PEI, but there on the He's other end, you, you see the first one. That's why he, we talked about him for PEI at the beginning of the game to watch, Braden White. He's tough, he's been reliable on the block. And he's gone right at Alberta's big guys, finishing with uh, with confidence from both hands too. He's been using right and left on the block. Do you guys see the maturity in, in Braden, the two kids that are a bit older, and the maturity they bring to PEI? I, I think so. You see that PEI, even though they were up 10 and now it's only a five-point game, they have not looked in their body language that they have panicked at all. They're going to stick. They're going to stick to their game plan. You see Gibb coming up here on the replay, finding Thomas for the trailer three. It's good offense by, by Alberta. They didn't rush and force anything, and they let they let uh, their half court come into set, and, and, and Thomas happened to be wide open. Yeah, that, and then you saw in the, from the beginning of the game, that's what Alberta wanted to do was score in, in a transition. So they were able to find an open man. It was a bad breakdown by a PEI. They left Thomas open at the top of the key, and he knocked it down. It was a great steal. A walk using his length. Good finish to the quarter for Alberta. 55-50 PEI. Alberta's able to shave a 12-point uh, deficit down to five. As we go into quarter number four, uh, gentlemen, keys to Alberta's strategy moving forward. 
Yeah, I mean, for Alberta offensively, you see what they want to do. They want to get the ball down there to their dogs. They want to get it here, the ball, a walk, and they want to push the ball down there, down their throats as much as they can. So uh, they got to keep doing that. But again, they need help from the, the, their other players, their other three players on the court, moving the ball and execution in this fourth quarter. Because this PEI yeah, so team, option, they got some... going to be our transition. Here we're listening our defense, to Coach Parker. we're still going to pick up. I like the switch-all look on backside action. Unless it's really big little. Now, if you're guarding 21, I want you to be in a front. Get around. That means on ball pressure. You need to be ready to dig up so they don't have a lob. Weak side. Pinch into the key. We're picking up full court. On offense, we're transitioned into 50. If we have a quick hit, I want us to run four. A walk receives the down screen. Clear out. One on one from the high post. It doesn't mean you need to score, it means you need to take a great shot or make a great pass. Play off two feet, move for him. I'll Any tell you questions? what I saw, guys. Here we go, team left. Coming back. out is the body language of PEI is determined and confident. Mm -hmm. But you can see bits of that with the Alberta guys, too, as well. You can see now that they made a little bit of push, they're feeling better about themselves. Here's one thing that I like what Coach Parker says that I, I would like to see Alberta do more. He keeps saying play off two feet. You're seeing a lot of guys jump to pass. You're seeing a lot of guys throwing passes on the move. The Alberta kids, for the ones that will play at the next level, they'll, they'll find this out. Coaches are going to make you play off two feet because right. you're more under control. You're p passing and moving from a position of power. So I hope to see those guys uh, take that to heart in this fourth quarter because when they're doing that, they're doing a great job. When they're running and when they're jumping to pass, that's what PEI wants. So. Let's see how Alberta responds to that and, and how they take that in. An another thing I liked it from Coach Parker was uh, he, uh, he demanded that the guys pick up full court. And we talked about that early in the uh, first half. Having guys like Marvin Washington, who didn't play much in the third quarter, he's coming in with fresh legs now in the fourth quarter. He's able to pick up a little bit more full court, put some pressure on these guys who have played some more minutes from PEI. PEI uh, pushed the ball up in transition once again. Uh, what I would call a, a, a fairly soft call, but again, when you force the action like that, you you make the referees make a call. Absolutely. And, and so uh, Alberta, uh, who just on a very nice take uh, by number 11, Jack Drybrow, Jack Drybrow from Calgary, uh, was able to turn a negative into a positive real quickly. Well, I think what they just did right there was was the thing that uh, PEI had been doing the majority of the game was, again, pushing the ball intelligently. Good head man on the ball, got the guy in rhythm, and then drive out made the right choice. Get to the basket and put the onus on the defense to get in front of you with a couple of the passes that Alberta's thrown over the course of the game. Uh, they were indecisive, and there were kind of those in-the-middle passes. Of, There's a defender there, but maybe he'll catch it. So more of that from Alberta will probably help them out. Only down three. 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. Yeah, there you see good the ball pressure. Yeah, really there you see the ball pressure that Coach uh, Parker demanded out of the timeout. There's and that sense of urgency that we were talking about. And there's our guy going right. And nothing on the backside uh, rebounding-wise. The mm -hmm. walk has got to get in there quicker. Too many guys watching the ball. But uh, for the first time in the game, really, uh, P.I. missed a couple of bunnies. Good and tough take from a walk. Great take. Walk. Big play from Milwaukee. These are the kind. This is the kind of stuff that. This is the tempo of, of, a, of game that Alberta wants, and those are the guys that they want. Clearly making those plays. So, a walk, getting into the lane, finishing with contact. He's long. He's he's a strong player. If you're PEI, you're going to want to probably foul him harder than that, so he can't get the ball up to the rim. But uh, again, easier said than done. He's he's a tough kid. Tough kid. And these are really team building moments. When you, you aren't playing to your potential, your coach puts you in a position where you got to pressure the ball. They're forcing turnovers. They've got PEI out of their rhythm now, and they're missing shots that they weren't missing earlier. They're playing at a faster pace than they're comfortable playing. So uh, great adjustments by Coach Parker. And by the kids. And by I mean, the kids. The executed. kids are responding. They're yeah. responding. There again, you see the full court pressure that Coach was talking about at the timeout. Mm -hmm. We just see a here coming in off the bench. Now you have uh, two great scores, two, two of 
one of the better scorers in this tournament, um, both on the court at the same time. If, if you're Alberta, you couldn't have asked for a better start to the fourth quarter. No. Um, you, you came in down five, and within a couple minutes, you've tied the game. I want to see if, I, if I'm PEI, I want, I want McCauley to get more involved again. I, we, I don't even think, I can't really remember him being on the court much in the third quarter. Now he's back in and he was handling the ball. When they were at their best, McCauley was handling it and getting shots. So I'd like to see them try and do some things to, to get him going again and get him moving towards the rim. Yeah, you're exactly right, Steven. I know you know how this is. These kids are really young. You know, coming off the bench, you haven't played much in the third quarter. And at, at our age now, playing as long as we have, we know how to come in in the game after we've been sitting maybe for five or six minutes and come in and really come back into our rhythm. But for these kids being so young, that's a tough thing to do. Yep. Shot clock, uh, near shot clock violation. Aggressive penetration by Marvin. Uh, Got to make those ones. If you're Alberta, you gotta make those ones. But everything, you did everything right to get the look. And that's, yeah. Another tough hoop from one of uh, one of their experienced guys, Logan McDonald. He's been pretty steady in the second half using his, uh, using his size at the guard spot. So we'll see how Alberta responds. That's a good move. Really like to see him take it at the rim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what Awaka and Ahir have been doing best. I mean, I, Ahir has shown and Awaka has shown too. They can shoot the ball, but they have an, a speed advantage to go with their size over the PEI guys. So, again, to put the onus on the refs and put the onus on the defense, their ability to get to the middle and crash the glass has got to be what Alberta has his hat on. What I really love about what these guys are doing right now, even though they, they both hit a couple jump shots in the first half, they're not settling right now for the three. You can see, you saw here on the last play, spot up. Shot fake, drove to the baseline and finished strong. We talked about momentum and the impact of adjustments on a game. Unbelievable. Now seeing PEI actually rattled, yeah. starting to second guess themselves, starting to make little mistakes like that that are just uh, simple inbound passing that results in a, an easy basket for Alberta, well, not really because of their pressure, but because of PEI 13. panicking. Don't let him get the ball. We're going to cookie pressure 13 to not let him have the ball. We're 10 is the other one. If you throw, then 10. 10 is the next one that we're going to cookie. We're going to keep the pressure up. That's great. That's all we're looking for. Make them uncomfortable. Let them make the mistake like we talked about. We're not looking to reach. We're looking to let them make the mistake so we, we can move forward onto the play and get easy buckets. If we are in a quarter court walk up set, we're going to play four for here out of the high post. That's it for now. The other thing we'll move to in a second is back. Whoever's being guarded by their biggest, slowest player is going to set the back screen. Marvin, take him one way, slice back the other way, we're going to open up the court that way. Do you have any questions? Find your matchups as soon as you get in. I really like how Jackson communicates with his players because it's very straight up. It's, it's very, for lack of a better way of saying, it's very adult in that um, he is telling them this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. And this is a great thing for young players to hear. Play under control. Make the other team make a mistake because you're playing so hard. Not be so anxious that you're out there and you're trying to make something happen. Play hard, do these things, let them make the mistakes. Great things for young players to hear. Really got a, he's been impressive in his timeouts. Jackson doesn't sound any different now than when they were down 12. No. He's kept the same demeanor throughout. Absolutely. And that's really cool that you can see consistency from a coach like that because over the course of a six day tournament, consistency is what you need. Once again, pressure paying dividends. Uh, that's that's the that stuff team. we've been talking about. Yeah, exactly. Taking care of the ball. Once they get it back, they have to reward themselves with a good possession. Yeah, they have to reward themselves. And you're, you're now starting to see the hustle, the full court pressure from Alberta. And um, you heard you heard, heard Coach Jackson in the time I talk about cooking the ball. I'm not exactly sure what that means, cooking, <laughs> cookie pressure. But I could imagine that it means that they really want to keep the ball out of a couple players' hands. He mentioned uh, 13 and, and 6, I think. And they've done a great job. I mean, McCauley was a guy that really gave them trouble in the first half. And they have really stuck to him and gotten in him in the second half and made it difficult. Yeah, there you see the help side rotation. And that hasn't, great been, job the whole that hasn't yep. been there the whole game. So yep. when, they, when they're getting down to it, they're really doing a good job. Much greater sense of urgency, both ends of the court by Alberta. Now execution, taking care of the basketball, the most important at any uh, part of the game, wouldn't you guys say? Yeah. I'd say, yeah. Uh, with, as this tournament goes on and you play other, other provinces, um, not to take anything away from PEI or Alberta, but when you, you get down to it with the, the general powers in Canada of Ontario, BC, Quebec, 
The sense of urgency in the execution is going to be what wins you basketball games. If you're not if you're not playing hard from the get go, you're you could be in a hole that you might not be able to dig yourself out of. Mm. There goes Jack. <laughs> Jack is back. There you go. <laughs> Jack is back. <laughs> Handsome Jack. Yeah, Jack makes his first shot of the second half, I think. Yep. You know, you talked about him, Steve, coming in and being a little spark. He didn't play much in the third quarter. Comes in and knocks down a huge three on a second chance shot. Mm -hmm. Right here, right back at him. And this is it. An easy call for easy call for the refs on the push. There again, though, as you see, number 11, Max Ramsey for PEI, mixing it up and and getting a body on, the, on a guy like a walk who is not easy to keep off the glass if you're PEI. One of the dangers of highly charged, in long, a big emotional comebacks is you stop executing and you're running strictly on adrenaline. There, one of the Alberta players pulled early, mm -hmm. didn't stay in his spot. Ball came out easy rebound for the three pointer. We re the kids really have to stay home before they take off with the ball. Well, that's one of the things that PEI has done so well. And there's there again is uh, Keenan Wilkie going to the right and finishing hard at the glass. You get, that's the fifth time he's done that this half. And give them credit because PEI could have easily during that run gotten frustrated, started barking at each other. And, and, and maybe they could be, I don't know, down six, seven, ten, something like that. But they fought back, and, and they're up three again after all that emotion. So big shot from Thomas. It, it, they've responded so well. Now, again, it, it's, it's Alberta's turn to respond. It's an even ball game. Now will Alberta stabilize its emotions mm -hmm. and not play? Do not play like they're coming from behind. Well, it's like you said before with the emotional stuff. You're so anxious to make the next play because for lack, again, lack of a better way of saying it. This is fun, like who doesn't want to climb back from 10 and, and tie the ball game, but not at the expense of execution. So with the Alberta guys, they have to remain patient and they have to remember that there's still five minutes of this game left. Yeah. They, I think Alberta needs to settle down a little bit. You saw it there, you know, you heard Coach Jackson yell from the, the bench, run something. Um, you know, they come out of their timeouts and they ran four to really isolate uh, a hero or a walk at the top of the key. And then they, their last right. few possessions, they just came down and fucked right. something up. So, Max, yeah. Keenan Wilkie going right. If, the, if there's one adjustment the guards have not made, is to not let Wilkie go right. Mm -hmm. But where they're biting is on that head fake, that lift fake that he has with the ball off the dribble. Right. Oh. Yeah, we're going to see a walk get into the get into the lane and you can see even in the slow motion he gets low he's long he covers a lot of ground and then misses the shot but then quickly puts it back up in for two the thing that again we talked about earlier with PEI that I think all three of us can say we really like is again they use fakes they jab they shot fakes they let guys bite on fakes and I've been saying Keenan Wilk he's been going right he's been going right well it's not easy to stop him from going right. He's faking you, and he'll take a dribble, and they might have beaten him, and then he's pushing through with strength and with speed, and he's getting to where he wants to go. He's one of the older guys that's committed to UPI, and you can see that from an age standpoint of, I want to get to the right, so I'm going to go there. And that's impressive. That's really impressive. Yeah, it is. You see Alberta came down again, tried to run their four play. And here didn't have anything. P.I. did a great job. Good. They, they, they now know the play and they know what they want to do against the play. So they're staying off of here, giving them the mid-range jump shot. They don't want to allow them to get around the defense and get to the rim. And that's P. exactly what Alberta wants to do is if you're going to if you're going to really focus in on here, then drop into Knudsen and you have a nice, uh, nice post move for two. Great finish is exactly what we talked about earlier is giving those guys some relief. They need help. So Knudsen comes in and takes a great left handed hook mm -hmm. with confidence. Mm -hmm. Josiah did a great job of staying home on that play and finishing the play on defense. Yeah. Another see, tough turnover. Yeah, I, I think that's one that you can avoid. Uh, you just hit. You can avoid the uh, the cross court skip pass. You just had man the ball. Let's see what you get on that side or just reverse it to the top and then get it to the other side. A low hanging skip pass doesn't really do much for you. I don't think so. Yeah. I think again, Alberta in those instances has to reward themselves before being in a hurry to try and hit the home run. Here's Knudsen on the block. Good patience too, and then switching to use. Yeah. Really nice move from Knudsen. I think, guys, one thing I've noticed that uh, Alberta struggles with a bit on offense is their spacing. They're tending to get five guys below the free throw line, mm. close to the lane. 
and a lot of times it makes the attack lanes for some of their better players harder to find. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I think uh, they're anxious to get to the glass, and uh, where a walk and a here seems to be at their best is a here, especially in, in the in the high post area. And then guys are are anxious to get down there to crash. Um, they do need to have better spacing. Though. I mean, you got to use guys that are, are, are keeping people honest on the wing, and it can't be all below the free throw line. Because then also, too, if PEI gets a rebound on a missed shot, you got five guys below the free throw line. I mean, that's a perfect opportunity for PEI to try and get down to the other side and score. There you see uh, Washington, the smallest player on the court, matched up against one of their PEI's uh, bigger players. And here comes over from the help side. They play good deep, and um, they get the turnover. Once again, I'd, I'd say uh, Alberta's trying to find their even flow in their game. They're uneven so far. They're still making little mistakes, quick passes, uh, happy feet. And uh, until they get that out of their game, they're going to struggle with consistent offensive flow and effectiveness. Yeah, and it seems like the common theme so far tonight. Like every time Alberta has a good defensive possession, they come down a little sloppy on the uh, on the defensive end. You see a great move in the paint. Top a great move. turnaway on by Jack. <laughs> yeah. Jack is back. Yeah. He uh, that was that was a nice yeah that was a nice move. Post-secondary move. Great move. Yeah, tough move at a time when you need it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Jack has done. He had a quiet third quarter, but in the first half when they built their lead, and in the fourth quarter when they needed someone to step up and hit shots, that's been McCauley. And that's exactly what the, what uh, Coach Hammer said he would do yesterday at practice, is be their leader. And that's what big players do. They come in and crunch time when mm -hmm. they need to, and their teams need buckets. They come and make plays. That's a good shot. Yeah, great shot. Nice good pull up. I give. Good pull up. Good patience and good pull up with the spacing. Important possession right here, fellas. Yeah. This is going to be interesting to see what PEI decides to do. And good, yeah. Alberta's length. Yeah, well, nice shot by a walk, just getting the steal and knowing what he wanted to do on that one. Nice to see a solid, the, the solid. Positioning of the of the five Alberta players on that defensive stand and the walk being able to step into the passing lane. Yeah, I think for me, if Alberta wants to uh, to do a great job in this tournament, they have to, it has to be on the defensive end. They have to use their length. I mean, they, they rely so much on the offensive end from a, a here and a walk that if if defensively they can come together as a team, use their length. You see, in the past five minutes in the in, in this fourth quarter, they put full court pressure on the ball and shown that they can be a really tough, good defensive team. Full court pressure here again to see how PI handles it. And plus, like we were talking about before, with interchangeable parts and the ability to switch multiple screens from position to position, that creates an advantage. There's a, um, there's our guy going on. Uh, Josiah has to do a much better job up right. front. That was uh, that 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 was too easy for uh, for PEI to get by them and force force the defensive help, which resulted in a foul. But you still got to give credit to Wilkie though, because he is making right. a decisive move and he is putting that shoulder. Because you can see from there, like he's a strong kid, yeah. and he is making a move and he is sticking to it. Like there's no indecisiveness with him going to the rim. He wants to get to that right side of the glass and either make you foul him or he's going to finish it over you because that's just exactly what he's done. And you guys know from playing pro that with the great players they have go to moves and you can do everything you want to to try to stop them. It's tough to stop. Them. Yeah it, that's exactly right because if someone's not going to take away your strength then I'm going to keep going to my strength. I'm not going to get cute and show well, I'm a, I need to show him that I can go left now. No I'm going to keep going right until he stops me. Right. And that's exactly what Wilkie's done. And again you've got to give him credit because he has not for one second thought like, well, maybe it's time to go left now. No, I'm going to keep shoving it down the right side. Yeah, and I think that's why you, we saw Thomas come out of the game after that possession. Tough shot. Yeah. So now the kid has confidence, right? Yeah, now he's he, going. He's gone right. He's, he's knocked down. He's made his layup, right hand layup three, four times in that's a row. A big shot. Now he makes a great move, crossover dribble, pull up jumper, going to his left. Good pitch. That's got to go. Knocked down. Good shot. Knocked down. Bang, bang. Big time shot. 71-70. One minute, 33 yeah. seconds to go. And we got a one point game, guys. Good what setup. What a great yeah. start. This yeah. is really a great. Yeah, what a great opening game to the tournament. You see Washington getting ready to check back in. I think he's coming in so he can be that defensive presence uh, on Wilkie. Good D by Another, move. Another Good great move. Move. That was tough D by Gibb. I like that matchup for Alberta going on Macaulay, having that uh, 
football type being the one to uh, to check McCauley. He uh, he really dogged him on that play. I like Gibb. I love his effort. I thought uh, love him. I thought Gibb finding a walk for that for that corner shot was perfect. Kept it simple. Took a good, hard, convincing dribble to the left. Defense sucked in, and right when uh, right when the defense committed to stop the penetration, he pitched it to a walk for a rhythm shot. Nerves a steal from Jack. Handsome Jack. He's, uh, <laughs> he's had a really, really a nice game. Throw. He's played, he's stepped up in all the moments that his teams needed him to step up. Him and Wilkie have really been impressive from the wing for them. And then having uh, Braden White battling down low against all of Alberta's bigs. Either team, yeah, whoever, whoever comes out uh, on the winning side of this, uh, it's been a good showing for both teams. I think uh, what Alberta is going to be uh, trying to focus on ob obviously is the execution the but let's listen to high. coach Jackson so to tell the story side out. when we get into this team what I'd like us to do is I'd like us to run post exchange into ball screen we've been throwing five 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 four 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 at them they're ready to guard out of the high post so I want the handoff once we get it handoffs coming over here I want the person who's guarding by the biggest player biggest slowest player to be over here handoff comes you're meeting I want our best shooter in that area right there, someone else in the corner. So let's say right now a walk, you're here. Cole, Marvin, hand off to Jack. That's a here. On defense, on defense. Listen, we are switch all. Switch all, we're high in pressure. Listen for my call, I'll call foul when we need to start the foul again. Yes. Alberta. I think that's the right strategy to go with, to open the, to open the last minute in 15. I mean, you know, you're down three, but I mean, a minute of 15 is a lot of time to, to play basketball, and you have the ball. So there's no panic. You have to try and get a good look here, and then do what got you back into this game. Dig in defensively. Try and make PEI be the ones that make the mistakes because you are putting the pressure on them. But they got to get a good look here. You have to. See Washington with the ball, Great get to the middle. Good penetration. Good, good find. Good, good, good find by Marvin. 73-72, one minute, two seconds to go. Great execution out of the timeout. Now they got to dig in. This is big. Hopefully drive row if you're Alberta, can keep Wilkie going to the right. Good help side rotation from Knutson. Very nice by Knutson. Oh. Okay. Oh. That is called youth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. He got that's, so that's excited. You know. Um, he, you, can, you can see in his eyes he wants to make the right play, right? Absolutely. Yeah. He's looking up the court, he sees his man on the wing making a run and he wants to make the right pass. This is a great just, great job by Marvin of getting in there, getting the defense to commit, and then Knutson stepping right where he needs to be in the short corner and hitting a shot over a high hand. I mean, if you're PEI, you defended that pretty well, that but if you're okay, you sure Alberta, you, you just made a better so offensive play. Run our regular, but this is what I want. I want Keenan over here, and I want Noah looking like he's gonna do that flash down there. Noah, I want you to come back, get Keenan in the screen, and get him going. Then at least we have the ball, yeah. right? Just our normal setup. Instead of Keenan rolling down for that layup, <laughs> guys got that? Yeah. Noah's gonna come over and do that. Or Logan, I'm, I'm sorry, Logan, you're, go, you're gonna come over and set that screen for him okay. and get the ball, okay? <laughs> then, okay? Yeah, you're taking it out. Then we'll run black. Okay, then we'll run black. No, 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 no. Let's go into B. Let's go into B. Okay, yeah. let's punish them. Okay, spread it out and four out, and let's get it into B. And if that means the ball's got to go side to side, it means the ball needs to go side to side. I got lots of clock. Yeah. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Impressive part about both teams is how their coaches handle their timeouts. They, no one's gotten emotional, no one's gotten panicky. They've just laid out exactly what they want their team to do, and they're relying on the preparation that they've done coming to the tournament. It isn't throwing stuff at them they don't know. It isn't getting upset. It's anything. It's just treating the kids like, all right, we've we practiced this, and let's just go do it. And what a fun way to play for both teams. 37 seconds to go. Alberta down one. Knudsen on a big, big steal. Big steal. Huge. Huge. Marvin Washington bringing it up. Alberta sets down one, 25 to go. High pick and roll. Great rebound by Knudsen. Great defensive play though. All right, if you're Alberta, you got a foul now. Got a foul. 
So if you're a PEI, who do you who do you get the ball to? Yeah, you got to foul, put him on the line, and hope that he misses the free throws. I think if you're PEI, you got to either get the ball to to McCauley or you have to get the ball to Wilkie. Those have been your guys that have helped you. See the, the pressure time. here. But this is yeah. It's, now it's just a matter of who's going to hit shots. Nine seconds to go, though. Uh, he hits one or two. Alberta has a timeout. They have a chance to run something good to uh, to bring to bring them back into the game. It'll be interesting to see this young man's had uh, nerves of steel the whole game. Mm -hmm. uh, how he handles the pressure at the free throw line. Yeah, big shots for PEI here. Yeah. Rare miss. Big shot. Big shot. Big shot from Keenan Wilkie. Nine seconds to go. Alberta down two. If you're PEI, you say obviously no threes. If you're Alberta, do you even look to shoot a three? You got to get to the rim, don't you figure? You got to get to the rim. You got to get to the rim on this play. You've got. You got to make the. You've got to look. You've got to look to finish strong. Make okay. the officials make go, a team. call. So here's what we're looking for. We're going to run regular side to get it inbounds. Joe, we're going to run flat for a three point line. Joe, I want you to be the one coming up through side. You're going to attack a walk's defender. A walk, you're taking a step back. If you're contested, I want you to attack this paint, draw Mason's defender, and hit him. Though that's our option right now. Run regular side. Joe, you have the ball. A walk, you're taking a step back right behind. Your defender's going to bite on Joe. If you are contested, you're going to attack the paint, draw Mason's defender, and you're hitting Mason for a three. Here we go, team. We're side first, side first. Yes, we're wrong. Alberta. <laughs> That's why they pay us so much money. <laughs> they're going, for the, they're going for the win. Going for the win. Yeah. <laughs> going for the win. If I'm Alberta, I can understand that if you have a wide open three, you got to be a basketball player and you got to shoot it. At the same time, though, you're down two. If you have a chance to get to the rim and get fouled or hit a bucket, I think you have to take that first. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. They have two of the most athletic players on the court. Exactly. You got to put the onus on the D to keep you in front. Game winner. You made it. Wow. That's huge, huge, coach. Huge, huge, and a turnover. And a turnover. And a turnover. And a turnover. <laughs> and a turnover. Wow. wow. I'm so impressed by this kid right now. Never say never. <laughs> never say never. He didn't have the best second half. You know, he had a couple of really bad turnovers. You saw him make a terrible turnover at half court. Great point. A couple minutes ago, and he comes down, mm. nerves of steel, nice. and he regains his confidence and hits a huge shot for his team. Now they just got to get the ball inbounds and let the clock run out, yeah, you which they it, do. Let a walk hold it and let him shoot free throws. Wow. Knock these free throws down. You hit the key and point, Jermaine, though. Makes the turnover, never loses his focus. Really, really has a big-time demeanor about him, doesn't Man, he? He does. You big see the replay yeah. here. That is a big shot. He's the inbounder. You always got to worry about the inbounder coming back in. Well, you see here, they, they definitely were playing him for the drive because they gave him a lot of room. And give a lot of credit because, I mean, right there, that's a rhythm shot. You're yeah. getting it off a handoff and you're stepping right into it. So if you're a walk, yeah, that's a nice shot because, I mean, there was no lack of confidence on that one. So now you got to step up and make these ones. And there's only a second left, but weirder things have happened. Yeah. As we just saw. Well, yeah. yeah. After all three of us said that he should take a layup and he made a yeah. three to win the game. I, that, that, that's why we're here, not there. No long yeah. pass. That's, why they, that's why they pay Jackson the big bucks. That's exactly right. Yeah. What a win, fellas. Big win. Great, Great win. Yeah. Great game. It was a real pleasure being together with you guys. Yeah, this was fun. A lot of fun. This was fun. I think so. I like that one. <laughs> we're going to be back with winning coach. Jackson Parker from the Alberta U-17 boys team. The score 76-74 on a wonderful last second shot by a walk. What a game. Guys, any final comments? We're going to come back with Coach Parker. Any final comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of these guys. If you're Alberta, you couldn't have asked for a better shot at the end of the game. A wide open three-pointer, your defender goes under at the very top of the, uh, top of the key. As a shooter, as Steve knows, he couldn't ask for much more of a better shot than that. I think you got to give a lot of credit to obviously Alberta for being down 10, finding a way to win the game. But give credit to PEI too. They played they played well enough to win the game. Uh, if like Jermaine said, though, being Alberta boys, nice to see them. Uh, nice to see them grab one, especially in such dramatic fashion. 76-74, Alberta wins, and uh, Coach Parker will be with us in just a moment.
Okay. Here with Coach Jackson Parker. Uh, Coach Parker, why don't you uh, give us an overview of what just took place over that 40 minutes of, uh, of excitement? What do you call it? Even, uneven? What, what, what do you think? Well, I think, uh, unfortunately, our guys did come up with a bit of jitters being in front of the home crowd and, you know, the TV attached to it and all the extracurriculars, for lack of a better term. Uh, eventually, starting in the second half, I thought we settled in. We, uh, we took advantage of our athleticism. We picked up full court, started going on some runs. Uh, to PEI's credit, they, they fought back every now and again. Uh, at the end of the game, we were lucky enough to get a, a final touch and a walk hit a big three, and the rest is history. That's why you play 40 minutes. Uh, Coach, you did a, a wonderful job of making adjustments uh, both in your strategy and with your personnel. What do you think, if you could point to a key adjustment tonight, what do you think was the difference maker? You know, I think two, uh, two players really led the transition from sort of being the receiver to being the, the giver. And I think Mason, Mason Gibb came out and, and he brought a nice, brought some defensive energy that I think we needed because I think our defense is what really kept us into the game. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think the defense was really the, the thing that changed us and got us going with our momentum. And, you know, once, once these guys get hyped up, they're dangerous. They, they, they truly are. It really looks like it's a momentum team. And uh, I think if you're going forward, what's the, the key lesson that you're going to want to take to your team when you go into the locker room now? I, I think the biggest lesson is, <laughs> first of all, to come out the way we finished. But also that uh, no matter where the game is, we can always come back. The game's not over. It's a long, long basketball game, and we have the guys that we can go on runs very quickly. And if we were in the NCAA, we might even call a spurtable. <laughs> Jackson, congratulations. Thanks. Awesome game. Great start. Final score, 76-74 Alberta. Uh, Alberta wins its first game. Great start to this week of wonderful basketball. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.